You're listening to the DFS On Deck Podcast, brought to you by LineStar, the top-rated DFS tool set and number one companion for DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo Daily Fantasy. Go LineStar Premium now at LineStarApp.com. Now, here are your hosts, fantasy baseball experts, Joe Pizzapia and Chris Meany. Hey, yo, what's up, everybody? It's me, Joey P, Joe Pizzapia, and welcome to On Deck right here on the Line Star app. It's me, it's Chris Meany, and it's you, and we have a great day in baseball here. We have some fireworks, some punches being thrown last night, some trades going down. My goodness, what a night in baseball. And it's only going to get hotter today because today's the trade deadline. My goodness, Chris Meany, what's happening? It seems like everyone has lost their mind in 24 hours. Yes, in it all happened all at once. Like, it really did. It was crazy last night. That that three-way deal between Trevor Bauer and Yasuo Puig involved. We had the Reds and the Padres and the Indians. And then, like, as soon as that happened, I felt like... Three minutes later, that brawl happened in Cincinnati between the Pirates and and the Reds. And you wonder if Puig knew he was dealt as, you know, he was freaking out a little bit there. It Just a wild. Yes, he got dealt along with the suspension to be named uh, later. Well, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what Cleveland's going to have to deal with. I mean, they're going to get him and he's going to get a five game suspension uh, most likely. But I mean, just crazy. And, you know, and I bring this up sometimes. I, I produce a couple podcasts at The Athletic and I do three teams and two of them. Cincinnati and Pittsburgh and I've already had them on as one show together when the brawl happened earlier with Derek Dietrich right I mean right. this has gone on since basically yeah, opening they day like they don't they like don't, each other they do David not Bell like came running other. out of the clubhouse to get involved he hates Clint Hurdle <laughs> he, he was already tossed he Garrett. came back I know to just he fight tossed Clint came Hurdle came back yeah crazy and then so there's Amir <laughs> Garrett which I you know what oh, yeah. I, you know there's one thing I hate it's fake fights I hate posturing like, if you're going to be a tough guy, go be a tough guy and go hit somebody. And if you're not, yeah. then shut up and go sit down, you know? And, and there's nothing wrong with going and sit down. It doesn't make you a coward. It makes you more of a man, actually. But it, there's this whole thing where you know, I hate the posturing fight. It drives me crazy. So Amir Garrett's getting, in case you missed it, you should run to the internet and look at it because it was oh, pretty yeah. entertaining. He's yeah. getting taken out of the game, and he, instead of his own dugout, he takes a beeline for the other dugout. And just whacks a guy with a left hook there. He missed kind of the first punch, the second punch he nails. Then Tweed comes in there, and there's a big melee in there. It was uh, one of the uh, better baseball fights, certainly. I think probably the best one this year. Yeah. Sure that I couldn't think of. Definitely. Yeah. And then, like Chris says, immediately after, Yasiel Puig, or like he could sense that he got traded. Something happened. I don't know. <laughs> Something but happened. the deal was this. Trevor Power will go to the Cincinnati Reds. The Cincinnati Reds will send – uh, prospect Taylor Trammell to San Diego, San Diego, and the Reds will send Yasiel Puig and uh, Fran Mil Reyes over to Cleveland. So in one fell swoop, they dealt, um, they dealt Trevor Bauer, who you know in theory they have Kluber coming back in a couple weeks. We'll see if he's any good because yeah. he was not good last time. Plesac's been very good. His ERA is under two, um, and basically they just added not one but two legitimate bats. Power and bats. I know Puig has some issues, but I mean that's a lot of meet in the middle of that order it wasn't there before so what's your feeling on this from the cleveland side you know what i like it i uh you know bauer obviously you know they weren't going to sign him there was some some turmoil with you know arbitration obviously uh you know in the off season and that happens i think we brought that up before his last pitch he ever threw as a cleveland indian went 105 miles an hour out over center field the wall so there was Definitely some issues there between right. so Cincinnati traded one <laughs> one head case for another. Basically, it's like really it's like, they look, they kind of did. Uh, it, you know, it, yeah, it's you know what I like it from Cleveland standpoint. They we talked about this at the start of the season when we were doing the show. We didn't like their lineup, right? Jose Ramirez has struggled. Francisco Lindor had the injury to start. They had a hole with Edwin gone and Michael Brantley gone. And now all of a sudden they get Puig, who has 22 home runs, and they get another power bat in Fran Reyes, who has 27 home runs. Plus, I mean, they got Logan um, They got Logan Allen in Logan that Allen deal. Too, yeah. They got another pro- mm-hmm. two other prospects. The Reds really gave up a lot for Trevor Bauer. And again, on that podcast, they were talking about how they were in a unique situation to take on somebody who was probably going to get a big time contract. And now, you know, from their standpoint, yeah, they gave up Trammell, a pretty good prospect, their best pitching prospect from, but now from their standpoint, only the Dodgers have given up fewer runs in the NL. They can't score, but they have a 
potentially a trio heading into next season that looks like Gray and Bauer and Castillo. I mean, that's a pretty solid that's very three. Good. It's yeah, very good. So. It's a smart move. I think it's I like when it's a good trade for everybody. Yeah, it um, seems like that. And I forgot it's Tramel. I forgot it was Tramel. It's not even yeah. in my coffee yet this morning. But you know, Trevor Bauer, the one thing you can say about him is over the last couple of years, hardly anybody throws more innings than him. And True. that's something in Major League Baseball now that is sadly uh, a lost art form. Um, uh, you know, 176, 190, 176, 175. He's got 156 already this year. So that's a very big positive, I think, from yeah, looking I at agree. that from that perspective, too, because now you're getting somebody that really you could put in there a ton. Uh, let's fly around yesterday. We'll do it quick because there's a lot to get to. So we'll kind of give you the the lightning version because a lot of other stuff happened. But we had to spend some time on the trade and we'll break down stuff tomorrow, too, because we will be here tomorrow. We're not usually here on a Thursday, but we will be because there's a lot of games. Plus, we'll do our uh, trade deadline recap with the trade deadline this afternoon. So. That'll be a good time. Uh, so let's get after it. Julio Tehran, we thought would be good, and he was. He comes away with the W. That's a positive there for him. Donaldson with his 24th. Adam Duvall with two bombs. Is Adam Duvall somebody we should be paying attention to? Hmm? Yeah, I think we might have to. I mean, not only just two bombs. I mean, he hit one the other day. And yeah. He's got nine hits in his last four games. I think he's somebody, yeah, we should, because he's fairly cheap in what is a pretty good lineup. Yeah, before it catches up. Drew Smiley apparently – that's the guy that's going to stop the San Francisco Giants. <laughs> my on this there. goodness. I got nothing. I got nothing. I'm going to throw my hands up on Drew Smiley. Yeah. So his ERA goes down to 685 after this performance. <laughs> Just want to put that out His there. two starts in Philly have been basically lights out. He's got 13K and 13 innings and only give up yeah. one run. So Let's I get on know. it. Obviously, it's a mechanical issue. Something was wrong. Yeah. But something's right now, and this is just hilarious. So now you got Drew Smiley and Jason Vargas in the same rotation, and both might be relevant. <laughs> I just don't know if I have the will to live anymore. I just don't know. Uh, Jay Happ uh. is, was a fade last night <laughs> with good reason. He came away with the L. Uh, yeah. That's exactly what we thought would happen <laughs> where we were afraid of, and uh, it was. So you avoided the trap if you listened to the program yesterday. Ben Intende hit his 11th home run, uh, not- but this – What's that, Chris? He's heating up, Benny. Ben yeah, Attendee. he is. He is. Neither of the two pitchers, not Charlie Morton nor David Price, got involved in this decision, which is hilarious because I believe the last thing we said on this was they were so good last time against each other. You watch. It's going to be like a 7-5 like a kind of game or something like that. And it was a 6-5 game. So this is what happens. This is baseball. And this is why we had other guys uh, that we were very high on, one of which – Joe Musgrove, who came away with a W in that crazy, crazy game yesterday where everybody was throwing punches. So don't get lost in the shuffle. But another <laughs> W for Joe Musgrove. That's a positive. Verlander beat Bieber. As Chris was saying, he preferred the Verlander side paying up for that one. And he got uh, the shutout there. Uh, shutout innings, at least not the complete game shutout. But uh, Jake Odorizzi was another great pitcher from fading the top that we loved. He got a W as well. 2-1 game there. So good for him. Uh, and... And you, Darvish, I know he got the loss, but come on. Nine strikeouts, six innings. He was great. Come on. Yeah, he was come great. Come on, for that price, let's not be ridiculous. You know who else was great? Noah Syndergaard with 11 strikeouts of his own uh, against the White Sox. So Noah Syndergaard, again, I hope that's not his last start as a Met. I really don't. Like, I'm going to be in a foul <laughs> mood tomorrow if Noah Syndergaard is not a Met. Zach Wheeler, I, I don't care. Yeah, I think Wheeler's gone. I think, and, and again, looking ahead, I, I I like the move by the Mets. They grab a guy in Stroman who's under control, and now even if they don't squeak into the playoffs, there's still a chance. There's lots of baseball. And now the left. Yankees are like, well, who are we going to get now? Yeah, <laughs> there's that. There's Trevor Bauer knows Stroman, and then there's heading into next year again. We're not just that, talking about the not Reds. That Trevor three. Bauer was an option. Look, anybody no. who thinks that Trevor Bauer was an option in New York City, you are on crack. You had to give up a lot. Tell me, you have to give up a lot. But are we really going to think Trevor Bauer and the New York media was going to last oh, more than yeah, 36 yeah. hours? Yeah, no. I mean, come on, people. Let's 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 get real. So McNeil and Conforto went yard in this one. So I didn't get my Pete Alonzo home run. Everybody in front of him hit a home run. So that pissed yeah. me off. But Vladdy Jr., who you were on yesterday, hit a grand slam. So good job by you. Again, Darvish was very good. Goldschmidt hit his 25th. Kyle Freeland sucked, as he is one yeah. to do. And uh, the my first home run call guy didn't go yard, but... I did get AJ Pollock, which was the secondary one. So if the you lead listen off to the homer. whole segment, I got, <laughs> I got the lead off homer there. Where I was like, I want to go AJ Pollock, but I thought that was too easy. Yeah. You know, sometimes the easy one is the right. I got to remember. So I'll, do yeah. I get a half point for that? You you do. You should. You should I get, get a half, half point. point. Um, right. And you know, they got Vlad, the over. 
you got, you the, got over. the over in that game. Yeah, too. for Vlad 15. now, that's that's seven multi-hit games and 17 RBI in his last 11. He's he's absolutely on fire right now. Uh, and a couple other guys like Griffin Canning went six scoreless, seven K got the yep. win. We we talked you about all him. over that. That was and all then, you, Chris Meany. Before I went to bed last night, I was like, ah, you know, Matt Olson's up to bat, you know, extra innings. Matt Olson and, um, you know, Josh Hader would be a pretty good matchup. Olson took him deep with a walk off straight to center. Our boy, mm-hmm. Matt Olson, just put a smile on my face. That guy's so impressive. So, um, Home that run was a good, slugger. Wild Old night, slugger. man. Wild That's why night, I love baby. him. And Chris Davis went yard in that game. Let's yes. not we'll get, lose good that call. in the shuffle. Good call. Chris Davis sighting, ladies and gentlemen. So, hooray. I told Three you. Three for four. Time. I know. All there right. We well, now. that was yesterday, but today's a new day. Yes, it is. So it's time to get after it. It's time to uh, look at today's slate and let's start right back in the afternoon because <laughs> they didn't even they didn't even get a night game. They've got an afternoon game They're today. Right back the Reds and Byron. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this great. makes me so happy. So yeah. here we go. Let let's let's fly through some of these here and then we'll kind of yeah. break it down. So you got the Nats at home against the Braves, Soroka and Sanchez. You've got Castillo against the Pirates again at home after the melee last night. You got Zach Greinke and Tanaka in the day slate. You got Waspak and Jake Junis in the day slate. Uh, and then later in the afternoon, you got Ryu in Colorado. You got Daniel Norris and Suarez uh, together in Anaheim. So right off the top of the bat, let's start with the Ryu question. Ryu in Colorado. That was the one place where he didn't have the greatest start where everybody's like, oh, no, here it comes. And then, of course, it was fine. Uh, it, it, the price on DK, it, I mean, on FanDuel is 7.9. Mm. That is almost begging to be used. I think I, I almost like, I almost feel like, well, why not at that point? How do you feel about that seven, nine salary for him? Yeah, I agree. And the same on DK eight, three is, is basically why not uh, too? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, think this that's guy a huge has... discount and you want it. Don't you want it for this? Oh you, yeah. You got you Colorado and you got the Dodgers in play. Yeah, in Colorado, you've got yeah. the you know, I mean, a little tougher because you know you got the Yankees against Granky, so I don't love that. But I mean, it lets you basically do whatever you want on Fanduel. Yeah, if you it, go with Ryu. It, it really does, and I mean, I don't think you should ignore Jays. I mean, Junis is a is a contact guy. He's been giving up home runs. I mean, you could easily get involved with the Jays and Ryu. That's that's I think that's an underrated. That's a that's a tournament lineup right there. I mean. You get those, you know, you get the Jays. You could even get maybe some Dodgers in there as well and, and Rio. Um, yeah, I don't know about the Yankees today. I mean, Zach Granke is a guy that we respect. So I, I don't know about that. And maybe Atlanta. No, I'm not, I, don't like, I don't like like Tanaka uh, yeah. be, to be Granke at all. Um, and and, 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 and Granke is probably cheap too, too on DK. Yeah, Everyone very... is cheap on DK. What happened? It's like they're begging people to get involved in the day slate. And I would take advantage of this today. If, you know, we're doing the show early today because of all the day games, so it's out there earlier, I would absolutely 100% be looking at on DraftKings, which is something we, we've we been very, you know, very clear about how we feel about the pricing sometimes being very hard to navigate, but not so much today. They're begging for action on this one. Go get involved in it because when Granky's 8'6", and then my other guy, Annabelle Sanchez, is 6'8", who has pitched very well. I know it's Annabelle Sanchez. I get it. I know it's Soroka. However, when Soroka is 9-2 and Sanchez is 6-8 on DK, that's another just a huge opportunity where you could even pair with the Luis Castillo. And, you know, if you do want the one big arm on the slate, which I think Castillo is the quote-unquote big arm today. Yeah, I think that's the guy I would roll out in cash. Like, if you're a cash game player, he's the one I would roll out, not not Soroka. We've talked before about Mike Soroka. I mean, he's a phenomenal pitcher, but he only has 91 strikeouts and 107 innings. He doesn't get you that upside like a Castillo has, like a Granky has, or even obviously real what he has and what he has to offer. So that that's the way I would go in cash Castillo. Um, I, I do like the Braves though. I know Sanchez has been pretty good. It's just, where are you going to go for offense? I, I do like some of these Atlanta bats. You mentioned Josh, Josh Donaldson off the top of the show. He's been pretty good. Adam Bavall's in a little bit of a run and CRT again was, was on base, making things happen. Austin Riley's just not cracking the lineup. He's definitely not cracking the lineup against the righties. So very interesting slate. Where, where are you going to go? But I think you should take uh, some shots on Granky and Ryu in tournaments. I mean, this I, upside there. <laughs> hey, dude, you took the words out of my mouth. That's exactly. I, I was just saying, you know where I'm going? I'm going Ryu and Granky together. Yeah, I'm going to go not? up there with those two guys. I think they have really good shots at W's today. I understand they're both pitching in ballpark factors that aren't the best, but sometimes, you know, you got to look past that kind of stuff. And uh, that also means taking a look at a guy like David Peralta, who's 4.1, which is a nice discount. Uh, lefty bat against Tanaka, a guy who also gives up home runs historically. 
I think that's a definite way to go. We always know the Dodgers that are in play until further notice. That's who it's going to be. You're still getting a discount on AJ Pollock in this one. Uh, I know it's a righty, but still, he's just four three on DK. We're spending a lot of time in the DK pricing right now because yeah, I feel like it bears witness. So let's move over to the FanDuel side. Castillo obviously ten K there. Sanchez seven three. Soroka eight five. So. Uh, I kind of feel the same way you do, which is Castillo is your cash game guy today and it's, and it's safe and it's fine. And I don't, I'm not concerned at all. Uh, and I prefer it for the $700 more over Granky and Yankee stadium. I'll still take that one. Uh, do you agree with that notion? Yeah, I do. There's not a big of a gap there between the two on FanDuel. All right. So seven, nine FanDuel price for Ryu. Are you in on that? Because that is a huge discount. I mean, that's crazy. That I mean, if you do like the Braves today against Annabelle Sanchez, who's been good, then you can afford all the Braves you want. You can afford all the the Reds you want. And it's funny, too. Now you got to look at this Reds lineup a little differently, too, because, you know, Puig is now out of that lineup. And I'm not saying Puig has been the, the, <laughs> the straw that stirs the drink, but he's something you had to account for, you know? He was great. Power. He was having a good season. He was having a good season, you know? Yeah, he was. He had a slow start, but he's having a good season. And, yeah, I mean – you look at this Reds team. I mean, their pitching has been great. It really has. Like, the bullpen has been phenomenal. They're just not scoring any runs. And now you lose a big power bat in there. I mean, 473 runs scored in that's the, the second lowest in the National League. I mean, only the, the the San Francisco Giants have scored fewer. And, I mean, that team has just been scoring left, right, and center over the past month. So, yeah, you, you have to keep an eye on them going forward. I, I don't like their offense as much. I mean, they have a 5.7 no. team applied total today. I mean, uh, Scooter's got to pick I it up. He, and Scooter. he hasn't been good at all. <clears throat> Not nope. at Scoot, all. Scooter's the guy who's got to pick it up. He's a 2-7 right now. He's got to pick it up. Votto's got to pick it up, too, in a big way. I know he went yard yesterday, but that's another guy who's really got to step up and do something else. So that's our take on the day slate. Anything uh, anything from the Angels-Tigers game? Anything there for you? Or um, Not a lot. I don't like Well, Suarez. I mean, here's we- the thing. You know, you could probably do Ryu on either of these sites and get trout today because of the discount on Rio. And you probably should like Daniel Norris is, is well, that's why I bring it up. You got Daniel Norris, the soft toss and lefty against trout. No Tani. I, I really, you know, I mean, although Tani's a lefty, I get it, you know, you, but Upton, you can go there too. Uh, You could go that stack there. Trout, Otani, Upton. Yep. If you want and uh, kind of pair them with some of the guys on the Dodgers and still get Ryu and still make it work. I mean, it's just it's kind of absurd how easy it is because of the Ryu pricing. And I it's one thing to see it on FanDuel. It's another thing to see it on DraftKings. That's that was shocking. So there's your approach. DraftKings this afternoon. That's definitely the way you want to get involved in that afternoon slate. They're begging for it. Begging. Like All right. Are. So let's get after the evening now. Vince Velasquez at 7-7. We picked him last week on uh, his last start and he was good. Uh, he was exactly who we wanted him to be. Giants don't strike out a ton, but I feel like maybe after last night with the smiley thing, maybe just maybe we're hitting that patch where now the San Francisco Giants come back down to earth. I mean, it would make a lot of sense. I mean, it's, it was, <laughs> it was made overdue. Sense over the past month. Yeah, it would it's make overdue. a lot of sense. It, yeah. I mean, again, look at up and down this line. It's it's not it's not great at all. So, I mean, Vince Velasquez is not a bad little price there. It's seven, seven on FanDuel. I mean, I feel better about him on DraftKings at seven, yeah, five. Seven, five my he's a nice secondary. hundred yeah. percent. I, I, I don't like him as the standalone. I'm no. sorry. Just, I can't, I can't do it, nope, but I don't blame you. seven, five secondary. I like him. Plus how about this? Bryce Harper, four, three on DK. Um, it's like FanDuel broke in and like adjusted the prices on DraftKings last night in the middle of the night, <laughs> but Bryce Harper at four, two on FanDuel. So I love Harper tonight against Samarja. Samarja is one of these guys, too, that, you know, I think can blow up. And I I think that that's a great opportunity to get involved in Harper, which is a guy we haven't really talked much about. Also, like Kingery at the top of that lineup, too, at 3-1 and on FanDuel. That's a good price. Jose Barrios at 10-4 against the Marlins. Basically everything we said about Odorizzi, but more so today. Yeah. Uh, Because same thing. You know, yeah, no DH. I get it. But. You're also talking about Barrios getting a cakewalk lineup here that I think he's going to just mow down. I love him in cash. I don't care if it's chalky. I think it's a great, great play tonight. Uh, What are your feelings on this one? Yeah, overall, he may be one of my favorite pitchers on the board. Like if you're playing the full day slate, um, you know, he's one of my favorites. Yeah, you you nailed it. It's everything we said about Odorizzi yesterday, but a higher ceiling, higher upside, and a a good chance at a win here for, for Barrios and the Twins. Absolutely. And Bucks and went yard yesterday, so perhaps he, you know he's one of those streaky players too. So keep an eye on him. He's just three K. Mitch Garver still three two. Those are two guys. I'm still ro- rolling with Mitch Garver every chance I get because that guy can hit. Uh, we got Andrew Kittredge opening this one against Rick Porcello. 
So if you thought there was offense yesterday, well, I got news for you, boys and girls. There's going to be more today. This is actually one of my favorite uh, ones. There's no run total, though, yet. Why why is that? I don't know. I think they're maybe the Rays don't even know who they're throwing out afterwards. Well, Um, here here you go. I'll I'll, I'll pretend. You ready? Ten and a half. You going over? Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Okay. Eleven. You going over? Uh, I mean, yeah, if it's, just, it's one more run, I mean, 11, I'll, uh, if you gave me 11 and a half, I probably, I probably wouldn't. That's pretty high, but yeah, 10 and a half. I mean, the Red Sox are in this groove right now and you know, it really starts up like Devers and Bogarts have been good all year, but now like JD and Ben and Betts are starting to find their groove, especially Mookie Betts atop the order. I mean, he had that three home run game the other day and he's he, over the past like six weeks, he scored more runs than anybody and it's not even close. So I like the I like the Red Sox a lot to score some runs, and on the other side, it's Porcello, right? So they, the Rays should be able to square up, like guys like Nate Lowe. Uh, I know Meadows has been struggling. I don't know if Fam's going to get back in that lineup, but Garcia is a guy that I've liked, especially on Fanduel, and he hits in the cleanup spot. I mean, he's super super cheap. I mean, checks in at three thousand dollars. Lowe's two eight. So there, there's some guys there that I you know I can get behind for sure on the Tampa side, but I really like the Red Sox. All right, now this one I know you're going to love because you got Zach Plesac at seven seven against Jose Urquidy at eight. And Urquidy's a guy, just your guy. We've been talking about him, and I actually even picked him up in our league this past week because... Oh, baby, I was, he's going to win you a yeah, ship. I did. I hope so. <laughs> I, and, uh, you know what? I hope I hope he goes... I hope I meet you in the finals of that league because we're That'd both be in the playoffs, and I want to, <laughs> I want him to do it to you. I want that to be the guy <laughs> that sticks no. you. <laughs> no. So, look, over the last two starts, 13 innings, 15 strikeouts, two walks, six yeah. hits, six six and it was against the <laughs> rangers which is a pretty good lineup and the cardinals who have been very very good so i feel like everybody's going to be immediately jumping on the cleveland indian bad wagon and i think this yeah, is a great opportunity from an ownership <laughs> spot to go with your queedy tonight and the astros uh he's 8k i said on FanDuel on DraftKings. uh he is just 7k you want to talk about a great tournament arm a great secondary arm He's even better than Velasquez, I think, tonight. But uh, to me, I just think everyone's going to see Plesak. Everyone's going to kind of feel that, oh, Plesak, he's been good, and the ERA is nice and all this stuff, and they just made a trade. Well, Plesak's not there yet, no. <laughs> okay? And I don't no, know if Brandon is going to make it there in time, but probably will. But still, um, I think your Quidi is a guy you got to really pay attention to right now. Yeah, we always talk about contact rates, and we usually talk about them in, in a negative way, but this is a positive one here. 71% contact rate for your quitty. He's got a 13 swing strike percentage. I mean, he's got some stuff. He keeps the ball on the ground. I mean, he's Which got a ground so ball rate of 49% of the time. Before the year, right, it was Josh James talk. It was Forrest Whitley talk. It was like, yeah. who's the guy's going to fill the void? And then this kid kind of pops in there the last couple of starts, and you go, okay, well, no one saw that coming. And that's what's fun about baseball, right? All all the time and energy spent on all the other guys who haven't made a difference, and then this guy who nobody zero, nobody, yeah, no. I mean, he's, he had great great stuff in the minors too. I mean, he moved from Double A to Triple A pretty quickly. Had over a hundred strikeouts and in, in fewer than ninety innings. So this is somebody who who has got some stuff. And like I said, keeps the ball on the ground. The ball was flying out of the park, not just in the major leagues, but in the minors too, especially Double A. This guy only allowed two homers in Double A and ten in Triple A over you know, like I said, just under. 90 innings so i mean he's got some stuff i like him yeah i like him a lot more than police sack i think he's got a higher ceiling in terms of strikeouts you're getting a little discount on bregman tonight at three eight. Oh, i don't understand the bregman price i i, I, I saw that yesterday as well tqe i mentioned him he was three seven so he's moved, moved up to three eight and was, i don't know carlos correa too three seven so i don't know what's going on there the but correa price i get the bregman yeah, price he just I came don't. back they forgot about well, i would i would take advantage of the bregman price tonight i think it's yeah. the way to go yeah. uh mike minor at home against the seattle mariners who exploded for some runs last night domingo santana was one of them um, this is a little tricky for me because this is like one of the mid range. So I think I'd rather have guys like your Quiddy or guys like that and spend up a little bit on offense. And if I'm going to spend up on pitching, I want Barrios or DeGrom tonight, but DeGrom is super expensive, but still, I think that's more way I go. How do you feel about minor at 9.5? I mean, it's a good ROI potential. The Mariners yeah. lineup. I don't know if I trust them two nights in a row to do it. I get it. I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm on the fence, so uh, I need I'm somebody kinda, to kind of talk me over it. Yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to talk you into it because I'm kind of on the fence as well. I mean, there's just some other some other options, some, some cheaper ones, and maybe go well, a little look, bit Well, look, the last card he right? had was against the Mariners. Six innings, five And they hit him around a little bit. Eight hits. Uh, yeah, eight hits. Eight hits he gave up in that one. That is he hasn't true. been the same pitcher. He's been... 
he was dominant early, but he's, I mean, look at the game log, four runs, four runs, four, three. I mean, he's given up seven homers in his last three starts. I mean, yeah. two of them were on the road in Seattle. And in this one. So I think you fade it. And you know what? I wouldn't be shocked if you scratch. This is a guy that, you know, could be dealt. Texas. Could yeah, be that's another good point, too. You're right. That's a that's a really good point. Now, that's the kind of guy I could see the Yankees acquiring. Yeah. You know, another uh, cheaper left handed pitcher. Throw him in there. I'll tell you what, if he does start Domingo Santana at three, six on FanDuel, I think it's very much in play, too. He's swinging a hot bat again. Agreed. He's I like Beckham, guys. too. Both of those. Yeah. Varieties. Yeah. Four, one for Santana, three, seven for Beckham on DK over on FanDuel, three, one for Beckham and uh, three, six for Santana. Jacob DeGrom, you got to pay tonight against Lucas yeah. Giolito. 12K for DeGrom, 8 against Giolito. Do not start Giolito. I'm telling you, it's just not a good idea. No. Uh, 11.8 on uh, DK. So FanDuel actually really going balls to the wall here. That's a tough price. But, I mean, I don't know. I, I'll give me Barrios. I'm I'm going to fade DeGrom tonight. Sorry. Yeah, it's not that DeGrom's not going to have a good start because he will. And he'll rack up the strikeouts just like Syndergaard did yesterday. It's just you have to be so perfect with the offense then. Where are you right? going to go? Like, if you go to Grom, I know you're <laughs> not going to have the balance that you, that you want. If you go to Grom, you really have to get involved with Seattle. And that's it. I mean, Seattle or St. Louis, those are the two value lineups, really. Um, and, you, and you can't feel great about, about that. Like, it, you're going to throw that into cash? I wouldn't. I wouldn't throw Seattle and St. Louis into cash. Well, I'll tell you what. You know what you could do? You could do DeGrom and Oakland. So we'll jump ahead a second to well, Oakland. That I because, like. Because I think you could make that work because of Matt Olson at 3-4, Chris Davis at 2.7. What is going I'm on? I'm going to be – I'm literally banging the table here at 2.7. 2.7 for Chris Davis. I'm, <laughs> and I'm Mark Hanna. I like Hanna at 2-8. Against That's Jordan great. Lyles. I mean – Come on, oh, yeah. come on, Lyles. man. You know, so for me, you know, Olsen at 3-4, Canna 2-8, Chapman at 3-3. Yeah. I think you can make Oakland and DeGrom work, but then you've also got to get a little sneaky. At the, like you said, it might have to be the Dexter Fowlers and Jose Martinez's of the world uh, against Kyle Hendricks. Maybe that's the way you go. Uh, I don't know, Chris. I, it's tough. It's really yeah. tough. I think you kind of give yourself a little bit more breathing room with uh, – with Jose Barrios tonight, but because it is a shorter slate too. So it's, it's really hard. You know, if DeGrom bombs out, you're just, you're just done. <laughs> like it's not even, there's not enough to really make up any ground there, but uh, your Quiddy is another one too, that I just, I don't know, man, I'm all in that today. I was all in on Darvish yesterday and I was right about that. I don't get the W, but let's, let's be frank. He returned investment. Okay. Yeah. I know the W didn't happen, but still he was very, very good for that. I'm just price. looking now on Fandle. I just plugged into Grom and I mean, two, eight, is what you have left to work with on tough. on average. That is that is tough. I mean, we're talking FanDuel all the time and values, but to find guys under 2.8, I mean, there's not a lot around. I mean, we, we mentioned Chris Davis, and he's only 2.7. McCann 2.8. You really, all of your guys have to be under 2.8. So, yeah, you're right. You'd have to get involved with Fowler, Martinez. You can't even get involved with Santana and Beckham. It's, it's, it's really, really tough to do it. I mean, you could try it in one lineup, but I would make sure it's a, it's a tournament lineup because I don't know if, You'll cash with, with the Grom and just cheap, cheap, cheap. Bats. No, I mean <clears throat> you'd have to almost go contrarian with the Marlins offense, or you have yeah, to go uh, with the, like with that. the Giants offense. But you know, with guys like Pablo Sandoval two seven, Brian Bell to two eight, it's it's doable. But you're right, you're gonna have to find like that one guy who's two two and make that work, and then kind of plug on the pieces and and that's, that line that's star tough. app people. Yeah, that's why yep. and that's why line star app is so, look. This is why it's such a great tool. We use it when we're doing the show here. We use it before the show. We use it after the show. We use it during the show. You should be using it yeah. before the show, during the show, and after the show as well. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the pre-snap coming next week to you. I know we dropped the uh, some Twitter uh, links for it, but I'll try to do that again today, later in the day. Um, but again, the pre-snap show, which is the same version of this show, but the NFL version, we'll be doing our previews starting in August. So get ready for football. It's coming. Get your fantasy football black book as well. Number one in fantasy sports. Number two in football books. We're so close oh, to number one in football yes. books. Let's push it over the edge. Let's do it. Come on. Yeah, let's believe do it, in people. Us. Yes, let's number do it. One, We're going to get there. Some, We're going to get there. You know, it's number one, some crappy like $7 guide that somebody threw together and it's got one review. We have 48 is... five-star reviews on our How does guide, that get okay? up there on the top like that? Because it's cheap and people like cheap things. You know, come on, people. Hey, you want to? Hey, look, you want to drive? You want to drive the uh, the Kia? You drive the Kia. You want to drive the Cadillac? We're the Cadillac. All right. Pick we call. are the Cadillac. This is going to be the f- next year. The Black Book. We're the Cadillac of draft guides. 
I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot too. That's a nice little slogan. <laughs> you like that? It's pretty good. And yeah. <clears throat> speaking of which, Chris Meany and I are working on the fantasy hockey black book. So we are. yes, that is happening. Winter is coming. There will be ice pretty soon. The next thing you know, it's going to be hockey. So that's that's in process as well. So, Meany, give it to me right now. What are we looking for for the uh, for the betting lines tonight? Betting lines? Uh, obviously, right, the over and whatever happens in Boston. <laughs> yeah, the over, whatever happens in Boston. We don't have the total there yet, uh, talking to you guys this morning. But I like the Braves. I like the Braves today with Mike Soroka on the hill. The Reds are huge favorites. I don't know if I'd get involved there. There's some wacky stuff. Who knows what's going to happen in Cincinnati? I mean, minus 200 favorites. That's a lot. You have to lay a lot of juice to get some value there. So I just kind of shy away. But I do like Cincinnati. I will say that. Like Castillo on the Hill, they should be able to get by Pittsburgh. But it's been a wacky series between those two for sure. Uh, I'm going to stay away from the Yankees today as well with Granky on the Hill. I think we could get the under, though, at 10 with Granky and Tanaka. That's something to think about. The Jays, why not? They're hot. The Road Dogs, plus 111. Wag is back. Put your money in them. Um, let's go with the Dodgers for sure. I don't know. I'll stay away from that over-under. We're kind of on Rio here, so I don't want to go with the over. Um, I'll stay away from that total, but I do like the Dodgers. I like the Angels at home. I think you can pick them by a couple runs again. Uh, let's pick with let's pick Houston on the road with your Quiddy on the mound. Let's go with the over in Boston and Tampa if we get one. If it's 13 or 14, guys, which it won't be, you can pick the under, but I, it should be right around 9.5 or, or 10. Uh, the Mets, the Mets for sure on the road, get pretty good odds there with the Grom on the hill. And then the A's. I definitely like Oakland today at home against Jordan Lyles. Skip Matt Olson in your lineups. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay. So Chris Meany, it's that time to call our shot. Uh, yesterday. I, I got a half point. I tried to challenge myself. I got that one wrong, but I gave out the easy one. And that one was right. In fact, it was a lead off home run from AJ Pollock. So she got a full the, point there for that. I, right? No, no, no. I'm taking the half <laughs> point. Cause it was Colorado too. And that's why okay, I didn't want right. to, that's why I didn't make it my number one yesterday. It was like, well, that's my secondary one, but I'd feel like it's stealing money when I do that, but I'll take the half point. So Chris Meany, who you got, who's going yard for you tonight? Well, I, I feel like I may take your guy from doing this show with you. I'm unsure. Like, are you going to Philadelphia? Uh, you you can go. No, I will. I will give oh, you that. One. He's on the okay. list, but you go. No, you yeah. go. You take it. I want you to have it. I want well, you to it's be both happy. like it's Hoskins and Harper. I'll go with Harper. Um, lefties have ate up Samarja a little bit more um, than righties. So I'll go with Bryce Harper tonight. All right. I like that one. I'm going to go of all places, Miami to my boy, Ooh. Eddie Rosario. Nice. to take Sandy Alcantara deep and uh, help Jose Barrios to a victory. I understand it's not the greatest ballpark. I get it. But you know what? I want to have some fun, and I think Rosario is that guy tonight that gets the job done. So there you go, Rosario and uh, Bryce Harper. Those are your two guys tonight going yard. And just uh, want to remind everybody, follow us on the Twitter machine at Joe JoePizzaPia17, at Chris Meany, and, of course, at Line Star App. Make sure you're downloading that Line Star App and getting familiar with all the tools, especially with NFL season just weeks away. There's going to be preseason games that people are going to want to play. And that, that is the funniest thing to me, too, when people want to play oh, preseason yeah. DFS. Don't, uh, that don't just, bother. Oh, my God. It's You're wasting it's your hilarious. Money. It's hilarious. I just yeah. – and they're they're picking these guys that they have no idea how much they're going to play or not play. It's guys just, they've never heard of fourth string backs. Yeah, uh, you know, we'll probably get oh, in no, the game in the third quarter. He was, like, he was really good in community college. I saw him play. <laughs> I saw the tape. He was really good there. <laughs> Community college. Uh, <laughs> he was at the Waggis Pack. I saw him. He went to Waggis Pack Community College, and he had uh, he had two two hundred yard games there. You go watch. You go watch how good he is tonight. High school records. <laughs> <laughs> Community college records. That's right. There it is. <laughs> All right, that'll do it for us. It's time to go get some coffee. Because uh, again, but we're money. Whenever we don't have coffee before the show, we are money. So take that to the bank today. Have a great day of playing MLV DFS. Enjoy the trade deadline. It's going to be great. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow to recap that and everything else baseball for you uh, on Thursday. So there's nothing left for us to do now except step out of the on-deck circle and into the batter's box and go yard. We'll see you next time, kids. You've been listening to the DFS On Deck Podcast, brought to you by LineStar. Hit subscribe, tell a friend, and stay tuned for the next episode from fantasy baseball experts Joe Pizzapia and Chris Meaney.